So I have a basic fragment shader up and running. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I'll have a link in the description below or a card on the, uh, the top right. So I have a canvas set to white right here, and the code for this video is relatively easy. It's, it's uh, maybe three, four, maybe five lines long. Uh, so the bulk of this video is going to be me explaining why that works. So let's go into the whiteboard and figure out why it works. So in our normal dimension right now on that canvas, we have a, let me get the, uh, the black color. We have a zero to one canvas. So this is the zero, zero pixel. This is the one, zero pixel. This is the one, one pixel. And this is the zero, one pixel. So the range of our canvas is from zero to one. What we do with a mirror dimension, and I'm not going to go too in depth into the uh, the mirror dimension in this video. I did a video on that. I'll have a link in the description below or a card on the the top right. All it does is it transforms whatever dimension you apply it to. A simple algorithm, mathematical algorithm, where there's some sort of middle value or the mirror, and all the values on the left side are mirrored on the right side. So let's choose two values or three. Let's say this is 0.10 within our zero to one dimension. This is 0 0.5, halfway between zero and one. And let's say this is 0 0.9. So the algorithm we use is, let's say the new number in the mirror dimension, let's say M, let's say M, there we go. So the new number for the mirror dimension is equal to the old number, we'll just call it the N, times the max of the old dimension, which is one, minus that same number, so N. So what happens when we apply this little algorithm to these numbers here? So let's say the new number in the mirror dimension is equal to the old number, so 0 0.10 times the max range minus that same number. Well, we get 0 0.10 times 0 0.9, which is equal to 0 0.09. So this guy in the mirror dimension becomes 0 0.09. Let's do the 0 0.5 now. So 0 0.5 times 1 minus 0 0.5 is equal to 0 0.5 times 0 0.5, which is equal to 0 0.25. So the mirror in our mirror dimension is the value, not 0 0.5, but 0 0.25. Now what happens when we apply this to 0 0.9? Let's do it on the left side here. So we have 0 0.9, let's draw that better, 0 0.9 times 1 minus 0 0.9. That's equal to 0 0.9 times 0 0.10, but hold on. 0 0.9 times 0 0.10 is the exact same as 0 0.10 times 0 0.9. So we get on this side, we get the 0 0.09. So the 0 0.9 becomes, let's just cross it off with the black, becomes 0 0.09, which is the exact same as this. So that's how we apply or we mutate our dimension, the original 0 to 1 to a mirror dimension, where the middle is always equal to the max number, so in case this is 1, divided by 2, you could say to the power of 2. So in this case it was 1 divided by 2, which is 0 0.5, 0 0.5 to the power of 2 is 0 0.25. So that's always going to be the mirror, that's the formula for the mirror. This is the formula for converting all of the other values, including the mirror, into the mirror dimension values. Anyway, so that's the mirror dimension. So we're going to go into our code, we're going to do this algorithm, and then we're going to apply the step function to draw a square in the middle of the screen. So let's start by creating the mirror dimension. So it's the mirror number we want, which is equal to the original number coming in, and we're going to mirror across the x and the y. If we did this math for the y-axis as well, where this was 0 0.5 originally, that would equal 0 0.25 that would be 0 0.09, and this would be 0 0.09. So we're going to mirror the x, excuse me, the yeah, the x axes and the y axes. So st mirror number is equal to the original number times the max in our range, which is 1.0, and minus that same number. So we've just set up a mirror dimension. Let's apply a step function there. So we're going to say vec2 of the square is equal to step, and we'll say vec2, and we'll do a 0 0.8 times 0 0.25. I'll tell you why 0 0.25 in two seconds. So 0 0.25, and we feed in the st, and let's load that into the canvas. So canvas is equal to the canvas times our squares x and our squares y. Square dot y. There we go. All right. 
So we can just modify this 0 0.8 and we can get the, the box to modify like that. All right, so why 0 0.25? Well, in a, should I clear this? Yeah, you've guys seen, I've cleared, I'll clear this clutter. Just control Z, all this stuff. Control Z, 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 Z. All right, that's enough, control Z. So why are we multiplying our number by 0 0.25? Well, um, in our normal dimension, you have 0 to 1. 0 0.8 is like here, that's like 80%, right? When we apply this algorithm right here, in the mirror dimension, or to convert to a mirror dimension, the max number in that dimension is 0 0.25. This is 0 0.09, that's 0 0.09. There's no such number as 0 0.80 in a dimension where it goes from 0 here all the way to 0 0.25, and 0 0.25, then all the way back down to 0. This number literally does not exist, but the equivalent of 0 0.8 in this dimension does exist. So we have to normalize into this dimension. If you don't know what normalizing is, I'll have links in the description below or a card on the top right. So we have to convert this 0 0.8 into the equivalent number, or value, excuse me, in a 0 to 0 0.25 dimension. That's why we multiply by this number. When you want to normalize into a dimension, you just multiply or divide, depending on what the number is, by the max number in that dimension. We multiply by that number in order to normalize, and then we can have a square behave how we want it to behave. And so that's how we use a mirror dimension to draw a square on screen. If this video helped you at all, don't forget to give a like, subscribe if you haven't already subscribed, and I will see you guys in the next one.